Welcome to New Skills, a series of creative workshops led by practicing designers VA Dundee. My name is Laura Sayers and I work as a paper artist and an illustrator based in Glasgow. And today I'm going to show you a bit about my work and how you can do some for yourself at home. My design story starts off quite traditionally. I used to love art when I was in school and after that I went to do a foundation year which got me into the Edinburgh College of Art which is where I studied illustration. And throughout that time I was working with paper in different ways. I was really enjoying cutting things out instead of drawing or working on a computer and that whole tactility of just building up images with different sheets of paper and seeing how much detail I could get into my images. Um, and it was during this time that I joined a group called the Paper Artists Collective and they really helped me to push my paper art into kind of what it is now, but it's something that is still developing and after a few years working professionally I can still see how my work is changing and growing and is a work in progress all the time. So like I said, my work is all made of paper and it's this medium that I use to make my illustrations which are for lots of different things. I often make commissions for people, uh, people ask me to make a picture of their house or the place they got married or a picture of their family and I do it in my miniature paper style. Or if I'm not doing that, I'm working on projects for clients which can be anything from a editorial piece for a magazine or an award for an award ceremony and lots of different things in between. Recently I've been working on a project called Vadvent with the V&A Dundee which is a series of 24 illustrations that are all little paper cut windows which are going up on their social media channels for December and each one has a little scene of Scottish life in it and there's also a secret phrase that's going throughout the windows that you can try and guess as you see each one of them every day. And this project came about because I joined in with something else that the v &A were running, which is called Work in Progress, which was a one-to-one -one with a well-known designer. And I signed up the night before, and the next day I had a meeting with Kirsty Thomas, who runs Tom Pigeon. And she was really lovely and very encouraging. And through applying for this, the v &A saw my work and commissioned me to make these 24 illustrations. So welcome to my studio, I'm going to show you a few different ways in which you can get started with paper cutting. And there's no real set way to cut paper, there are so many artists that work with it and they all do it in their own individual way. But my way, I use scissors and that's how I've always worked. I do have a knife but I don't use it very often, I just use it for straight lines and other small pieces but I really love the control that I have with a pair of scissors and the way they're sort of moulded to my hands now that I've used them so much. So in terms of starting out a project, I draw a sketch, normally a very rough one first of all, just to get me started. And these don't have to be particularly accurate or neat. So after sketching, I normally come up with a colour scheme and this is a really important part of my work. I find colour and figuring out colours that go together well, a really satisfying part of the process. So I have big stacks of paper that I go through and I find these little swatches that I then piece together and figure out what colours I'm going to use for each project and which ones are going to be the ones that stand out and which ones are going to be more subtle colours. So I would recommend getting your hand on a load of paper. You can go to your local art store and they'll definitely have a few different brands and just choose the colours that really stand out to you and that appeal to you. So in terms of using scissors, a couple of my top tips for using them would be to make sure they're very sharp first of all. These ones squeak a bit, but they are very sharp because I have a sharpener for them. So sharp is important, but also knowing where to focus on your scissors is important. So I tend to say that you should keep your paper in the V of the scissors. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit here. Just grab a small bit, don't be cutting with a huge piece of A4 paper. Just a small bit will do and then I want to have it right in the V there. And my top, top tip would be 
to guide the paper instead of guiding the scissors. If you're guiding the scissors it can get quite clunky but you can guide the paper through quite easily so keep your scissors still and move the paper and you just want to be forming some natural shapes as you get started. You're going to need to move the scissors a little bit but don't really you don't want to be moving them in different directions so you're just guiding the paper around with you and I'd recommend trying to cut a circle that takes a bit of practice but you'll notice that I haven't done a very good job of that circle it's not very neat but the good thing about paper is that you can go in and neaten things up afterwards so just cut your first shapes quite they could be quite haphazard but you've got time to go in and really delicately neaten things up And I often do this with the corners of things, so corners of windows or squares. I just tend to round them off a little bit to make sure they are a bit softer and not as kind of harsh looking. Okay, so that's a good circle just there. And you'll notice that I'm not penciling anything out and I don't really do that with any of my work. I find that penciling things out makes it too messy and takes more time. The graphite on the back of the paper will get onto the front and then you've got all these smudges. But I would say if you do want to pencil things out, if you feel more comfortable doing that, then use a coloured pencil and do it on the back. And coloured pencils don't smudge and they're quite faint, so you can just follow that line as you will. And in terms of glue, I use this one, which is a tacky glue. It's a bit like PVA, but it's not as slippery or watery. So it sticks things really well. It's quite fast drying. So you just want something that will stick it immediately and not let it slip about. So super glue can do a good job as well. And I know some people who use a syringe for their super glue. In terms of the project I've been working on with the V&A, I've been making these windows, which kind of develop as they go along. I have got a sketchbook which I planned out the colours for and I've kind of drawn a little drawing for each day but some of them I haven't been too religious about. I think things just kind of develop as they go and you want to be open to new things cropping up and if I get too bogged down with a sketch that is helpful if I'm working with a client and I want to show them what I'm going to make but if it's for myself or if it's just a project that I know is gonna, I kind of know the end point then I will just go for it and see how things end up. And you can always rip things off and start again. Um, so with this piece, I, uh, I started with this little boy and then I made the background and then I filled the background with all these faces and I was getting more and more unhappy with all the faces. I kept ripping their heads off and starting again because I wanted them to be really good. And that's me being a perfectionist and I wouldn't recommend that, but I think you can uh, take time over things when you need to. So with that sort of piece I would photograph it for the final thing and then it would turn into either a print or something to go into a magazine or a publication uh, or just to go online like the windows for v &A. So I thought I'd show you how I make one of these windows and I'd speed it up for you so you can see different bits of my process hopefully in this time lapse. And you'll notice that some things I'm adding very small details with gouache paint. And gouache is a mixture of watercolour and acrylic paint. So it's very mattified and it's a really nice strong colour. And I use that for all of my kind of eyes and mouths and any details on jumpers or shoes. Uh, anything that I can't cut out of paper I tend to paint on. And I'd recommend trying that as well. You just need a very neat brush and uh, a bit of patience as well. My advice for new designers would be to have patience in more ways than one. I think you need to have patience with your work. It's going to take a long time to practice and to get quick at things. And there will be some days where you don't make anything good. And there will be some days where you're really productive. Um, so just have patience in those moments, but also have patience with your career. I think it takes time as well to meet people and to get to know a city that you're in and it's going to take time to build up a portfolio for one thing. So my advice would be to have patience, but also to give yourself a break, to take time and to just go with that journey and enjoy it as it happens. Thanks for watching this new skills workshop. 
I hope you've enjoyed it and if you'd like to see more of my work you can follow me at Laura K. Sayers on Instagram or find my website laurakaysayers.com and if you'd like to find the VNA Dundee on Instagram you can see the project we've been working on together throughout December and you can also see more updates about the new skills workshops that are to come in the future. Thanks.